Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here. Welcome into what could probably be my new favorite CMS series. And today we're going to be looking at Batman Arkham. And I'm very excited to be able to show you guys this series. It has been an idea that I have had since the start of Ash and Flash with the Disney series 2. I had a notebook and it was literally written on pages next to the original Disney series. So I'm very, very, very excited be able to bring you guys this series. With every CMS series, I give you an update about the amount of you who are actually watching who are subscribed. And we're actually at 75%, so we've gone down 5%, which is really, really good. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And if you haven't yet, I'd really appreciate you hitting the sub button so that you can stay up to date with the latest LEGO news, reviews, and CMF series coming out on the channel. So if you wanna do that and that is something that interests you, I'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get started with the series. Of course, Batman has to be in the series. So he's in the first spot and he comes with the regular Batman cowl and a regular Batarang. There's nothing too special going on here. The version I actually included in the series is based off his appearance from Arkham Asylum because his Arkham Knight version is actually in a set. If you didn't know, that figure is actually in the remote control Batmobile. So if you did want to get an actual physical figure from the Arkham series, there is a way, so you can go do that. So yeah, here he is here. It's a bit of an outdated c outfit compared to the newer armored one, but I still really like it and I think it's really iconic. Moving on to spot number two, of course, hand in hand, you have to have Batman and the Joker. And you know, he is such a huge part of the whole series and I actually designed this figure for Justin and I's fan choice series and I specifically chose it to get a feel for if you guys wanted to see Arkham content and there was a lot of love for this figure so I'm really happy to be able to bring him here again and put him in a series of my own. I'm very proud of the design for him. He uses the Doctor Who hair in green and he also has some coattail pieces attached at his hips. He also comes with one of the series 18 present boxes as well as some Joker teeth which is some of the things that you have to a break in the first Arkham Asylum game and would actually be able to fit in the box. So I'm really happy with the design and the accessory for him. Moving on to spot number three, we of course have Harley Quinn and she was a little difficult because she has four really distinct outfits and it was hard to pick which one to choose, but I think that the best and most iconic, I would say, especially when I do quick Google searches to see which versions of these characters actually pop up at the top. It's actually her from Arkham Knight. So she's here using the 2-2 piece in black. She comes with a new baseball bat with some new printing and she's also using the cheerleader hair that Harley has been using a lot recently with some red and black coloring on it in tan. And moving on to spot number four, we have Commissioner Gordon. And this is him based off of his appearance from Arkham Knight. And I just thought that it was more unique than the Arkham Asylum and City version because it was too similar to ones that we've gotten in the past from like the Lego Batman movie. So I wanted to make it a little more uh, special and unique. So I really like his like SWAT outfit kind of thing that he's wearing there with the dark blue hoodie that he's got on. His hair piece there is the dog trainer's hair in light gray and his accessory is just a pistol. Moving on to spot number five, we have Victor Zaz. And he is a character that I really question putting in the series, uh, given the subject matter. But you know, he actually did appear in the Lego Batman video game, so I figured that I could actually include him here. And he is pretty iconic, I think. And he's a big part of at least the first game a lot. And he's a bit of a side mission in the second. And you know, he appeared secretly in Night. So yeah, he's a he's an important part, I think, of the series, and uh, he's one of the inmates, of course, in the actual jumpsuit, so you could see that they're in the orange, and his accessory is a knife in light silver. Moving on to spot number six, we have the Riddler, and his design is actually based off of, again, what came up at the top for the Riddler Arkham, and this is what came up at the top instead of the version from Arkham Knight, which is definitely unique, uh, but I really like this version of him. I like the suit in dark green and I love the little bowler hat there. I like that I was able to add the purple trim. I think that it really adds to the hat and I think that that's something Lego needs to do in the future. Also his accessories is a new piece for his Riddler cane as well as a Riddler trophy. And that's actually just made 
using the Riddler staff piece from the Lego Batman movie, but in trans light green with a little bit of gunmetal gray, as well on top of a stamp piece in black. Moving on, we had Poison Ivy, and she's kind of had the same sort of look, I think, throughout all of the games. Really, I took more inspiration from Arkham Knight, and I took a lot of inspiration from the past Poison Ivy figures for the lead designs and prints and everything. The hairpiece that she uses is actually Luna Lovegoods from the Harry Potter series in red, and her accessory is supposed to be the flower pot that Catwoman breaks into Hugo Strange's vault to steal in Arkham City. It has a little bit more... Uh, flowers and stuff actually on it and the coloring and everything doesn't really make sense But I just wanted to uh, give her some sort of flower accessory, but moving on we've got Bane and He actually uses the mr. Incredible torso, but it's a little bit modified here He has a modified torso as well as arms to act like the Bane from the Lego Batman movie with the tubes there in red rather than green attaching to the back and uh, pretty happy with how he actually turned out here with all the detailing on the torso and the legs and the minifigure head just sits on the top if that piece actually did exist, which I wish that it did. Next up, we've got Harvey Dent or Two-Face and he is one of the most detailed figures that I think I have ever made. He might be one of my new favorites if I do wind up making a top 10 minifigures that I've ever made, he would definitely be there. Uh, wow, just, uh, you know, as I was going and adding in all these new textures to his scarred side with adding in the light red on top of the black, it just it continued to get more detailed and I'm really, really happy with how it came out. The hair piece that he has there is actually a new piece that I had to design for his hair so that it isn't covering the whole head, which is different than any other Two-Face that we've ever gotten before. And his accessories is just a goon gun in black, and he also has a flat stud there, which has the exact same printing from the 2012 Two-Faces coin, but this version is actually the scarred version of the coin, so it is different. And then in 10th spot, we have Mr. Freeze, and he is a figure that I am also really happy with how he turned out. He has a brand new suit piece that just attaches at the neck there, and yeah, ah, my goodness, it was a lot of fun to design. It was actually quite challenging because it is, I think it's really iconic, his design here, but I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end, and he, he also has his freeze gun built out of pre-existing parts using the Overwatch gun as its base. Then next, we have Catwoman. She comes with a brand new mask piece, which is very similar to the Lego Batman movie's Catwoman mask, but the goggles are actually higher up so that she can have them lifted up, which I think would be a really cool uh, piece for Lego to design so that it can be a little bit different. But anyways, her accessory there is just the whip in black. Moving on, we have Hugo Strange, and he is a figure that, you know, it's pretty similar to the Lego Batman movie one, but I did change up the printing and everything. And he also has the Arkham logo, of course, on his shirt, and his glasses and everything look really different. But I think one of my favorite parts in the whole series is actually this poster that I Lego-fied and made for him there with him being on the cover there in Lego form. I just think that it looks really good and I'm happy with how that two by three tile came out. Next, we have Raz al Ghul or Raish al Ghul or Raish al Ghul. However you wanna say it, I don't really care. I say it Raish al Ghul, so fight me comments. But anyways, he's here. He has the Doctor Who hair here in black, but with some dark gray coloring. And the accessory that he comes with is just the katana. The next figure in the series is Robin, and I hope that I don't get in trouble for putting this in the series, but he uses the new hood piece that will be appearing in the new wave of Star Wars sets releasing on Triple Force Friday. And he also comes with a staff piece as well as the regular Batman cape in dark yellow. And I actually think that while it looks really simple, I'm really happy with how the figure turned out. I would love to get a version of Robin with the dark red as well as the olive green. I think that it looks really cool and it's why I think the version from Arkham is very iconic. Next, we have the Penguin based off of his appearance from Arkham Knight. And he's the only figure with short legs. And, you know, his, oh, he was just so hard to design, I think, when it comes to his face. I wanted to make it special and unique and not like the other penguins. So I had a hard time making the bottle piece. But uh, I'm pretty happy with how the bottle 
eyeglass thing came out with all the scars and everything with through his eyebrow and it's just really detailed and his accessory there is just the umbrella piece in black. Next we have Asriel and this is a figure that came out pretty well I think. It was the last figure designed for the series and he uses a lot of new parts. He has the new hood there on top of the Bounty Hunter's shoulder attachment from the series 19 figure. He has a very iconic cape, so I had to create a new design for that. And he also uses the Batman utility belt there in dark brown. And he also comes with the Sword of Gryffindor in light silver. Next we have Nightwing, and it's a pretty simple design. It's actually based off his appearance from Arkham City. He's using the Lloyd hair in black, and his two Acrisma sticks there are just the three tall staff pieces. Next, we have Black Mask, and I really wanted to include him in the series because there aren't actually any versions of characters based off of Origins, but because he has the same design in Arkham Knight, it worked really well to kind of accommodate and please those fans of that game um, because I really just wanted to stick to the core three, but we'll talk about that afterwards. Anyways, he's here and he's got a really detailed suit and the mask was really hard to design, but I'm really happy with how it turned out at the end. And he comes with a goon gun in black. Next in the series, we have the Arkham Knight. And oof, this was so much fun to design. Uh, I really like the design of the character in general. So being able to actually draw him in Lego form was so, so much fun. And he uses the Firefly helmet, which I think works so perfectly here for Arkham Knight. And he comes with the newer blasters there in black. Last in the series, we have the Scarecrow. And he is just such an iconic character from the Arkham franchise. And he's here using the new hood piece, which actually sits on top of the gas mask neck attachment. And his accessory there is just a regular sack bag meant to be some fear toxin that he's about to drop in the sewers at Arkham Asylum. And of course, he also comes with one of the Wolverine claws on his hand. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is the Batman Arkham series. And you know, this is some of the most detailed figures that I've ever made. And I know it's probably gonna bum out a lot of people that I only included figures from the first three games and Origins isn't even being included in the new bundle for the games coming out sometime this year. So I didn't include any versions of the characters from Origins simply because of the fact that, you know, while it is technically a part of the story, it's not a part of the trilogy, the core trilogy. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments. Ash and Flash, Arkham Knight's M-rated, and you said that you'd never do M-rated or R-rated things for series. Does that mean that you'll do it in The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones? No, it, it doesn't. Uh, my excuse for actually being able to make the Arkham Knight, the Scarecrow, and the Penguin, and a couple other characters who are based off of their Arkham Knight designs, it's all based off of the Arkham Knight comic books. So I took designs from the first game and the second game, as well as the Arkham Knight comics. See, so technically this isn't from an M-rated game, which I really don't think it should be M-rated anyways. It's just the same as the others, just one really dark mission. But I know that I'm probably missing a lot of characters that you really like. Let me list off a few that I know I'm gonna see in the comment sections. Killer Croc, Talia, Batgirl, the Mad Hatter. Look, there's a lot of characters in the series, so it was really difficult to actually sit down and choose 20, only 20. I kept contemplating who not to include in the series, but I couldn't take any of these 20 out. I think that all of these need to be here. So if the series winds up doing well, I have a second series already written out with all 20 of the characters already chosen, and ready to be made. But maybe we'll save that for another anniversary for another game. But anyways, everyone, I hope that you did enjoy the series. It is one of my favorites now. Definitely, I think, top five, maybe top three. Maybe first place, I don't know. I, I love these games a lot, and I think that it is some of the best Batman storytelling that we've ever gotten in any form of media. Anyways, everyone, I hope that you did enjoy the series, and I hope that you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.